for popular bedtime read alouds. Welcome back, story timers. Today's read aloud is I Really, Really Need a Wee by Carl Newson and Duncan Beattie. Read with permission by Little Tiger Press. Uh oh, I really, 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 really need a wee. I need a wee so desperately. I'm jiggly. Can't you see? I wasn't desperate back at home, but now I am out here. I really, really need a wee. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I need to think of something else to make the feelings go. A twig, a nut, a waterfall. Oh no, oh no, oh no. I have to find a toilet. Quick, I'm desperate as can be. I really, 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 really need a wee. Aha! Uh -huh. A hole to duck into. But whoops! A mouse lives there. Squeak! Oh look! A cave! It's full of bats! Oh drat! This isn't fair! At last! A bush to go behind! Ah! Someone beat me to it! I really should have knocked first but there wasn't time to do it. And now I've got to run because a bear is chasing me. And I still really, 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 really need a wee. Hmm, maybe I can lose the bear by climbing really high. There isn't room for both of us. Uh-oh, oh dear. Goodbye. <coughs> Sorry, bear. I really am. I hope that you can see. I'm jiggly, wiggly, wobbly, wibbly, bursting for a wee. Yes, at last, a toilet. But oh no, look at the queue. A hundred others just like me who need the bathroom too. Ah, come on please, I'm fit to burst. I need it now, I'm gonna pop. I'll have to do the wee wee hop. I'll put it in a song. Why, oh why? Oh why, oh why, oh why is this queue so long? Just hurry up in there, would you? Oh, wow, come on! Woohoo! Ah, what a feeling! What a relief! I'm jiggly, wiggly free! From now on, I'll think twice about how much I need a wee. <laughs> Look at all those silly monkeys lined up in the queue. Oh dear. Oh no. A big uh oh. I think I need a poo. Story time. <laughs> Welcome back, story timers. Today's read aloud is There's a shark in the bath by Sarah McIntyre. One morning, Dulcie noticed that Dad had forgotten to let out the water from last night's bath. The tub was full of cold, soapy, dirty froth, but she saw something else too. A fin. Dulcie hollered, There's a shark in the bath! Dulcie's mum just smiled. Next, you'll tell us there's an elephant in your cereal. No, that would be silly, said Dulcie. Dad rolled his eyes. Well, you'd better go and fish out the shark then. So Dulcie did fish it out. Well, hello, said Papa Shark. And then... Up came Mama Shark. Up came Baby Shark. Dulcie took a step back. Are you going to eat me? Of course, said Papa Shark. It's breakfast time, said Mama Shark. Pass me the ketchup, said Baby Shark. But then Baby Shark looked around. Before we eat you, please, can you tell me, what is this? That's toothpaste, said Dulcie. Then she had an idea. Dulcie smiled. We need toothpaste to play the brushy tea brush game. And you have so many teeth, you'll love it. Hop up, let's get busy. Say ah, ordered Dulcie. Ah, said Baby Shark. Brush, brush, brushity brush. 
all three sharks were shrieking with laughter. Then Papa Shark said, And now I think it's time to eat you. Dulcie stomped her feet. But you've just cleaned your teeth. Mama Shark said, Is that a problem? I think not. Baby Shark said, My tummy is rumbling. Dulcie shook her head. Wait, before you eat me, let's play the wiggity wig game. I'll show you how. And she gave the pink bottle a squeeze. Splurt. Now, if there's one thing a shark loves, it's bubbles. Big bubbles, small bubbles, so many bubbles. Look at you. Look at me. No, look at me. Then Papa Shark clacked his teeth and said, Now it's time to eat you. And Mama Shark said, Yes, being this stylish is making me hungry. And Baby Shark said, Yummy, yum, yum. But wait, said Dulcie, you haven't yet played the happy, rappy, uppy game. Go on, pull the toilet paper. Please, can I play? begged Baby Shark. Just one more game, said Mama Shark. Papa Shark snorted. <gasps> Okay, but hurry up, kid. So the sharks pulled and pulled and pulled the toilet paper and oopsie whoopsie, oh my, what a tangle. Suddenly they heard a knock on the door and everyone went quiet. Dad boomed. Is everything all right in there? No problems at all, called Dulcie. That's good, said Dad. One more minute, then I'm coming in. If it's messy in there, you'll be in trouble. Baby Shark whispered, Who's that? That's my dad, said Dulcie. The sharks whimpered. Help, we don't want any trouble. Dulcie gave them a stern look. I will let you loose, but only if you help me play the spick and spanny game. So, splish, splash, splosh, together they cleaned that bathroom lickety-split. Just then, the door handle began to turn. Dad was coming in. Papa Shark roared, Back to the sea! The door swung open. Dulcie stood there grinning. I'm all finished in here. Dad huffed. That's such a relief. Back downstairs, Dulcie's mother gave her a look. Now, don't start playing with your food. Of course not, said Dulcie. As Dulcie settled down to eat a nice quiet breakfast, she heard a little rustle in her cereal bowl. Are you going to eat me? <coughs> Story time! <laughs> Welcome back, Story Timers. Today's read aloud is There's a Pig Up My Nose by John Doherty and Laura Hughes. One night, when Natalie was fast asleep, a pig trotted into the house, up the stairs, into Natalie's bedroom, and up her nose. Next morning, Natalie bounced out of bed and trotted down to breakfast. Morning, Squidge, said her dad. Did you sleep well? Yes, thanks, said Natalie. Oink, went Natalie's nose. Oh, my goodness, said Natalie's mum. She's got some strange disease. We need to take her to the doctor. The doctor tapped Natalie's knee, looked at her tongue, took her temperature, listened to her chest and popped a camera up her nose. There's the problem, he said. She's not ill. She's just got a pig up her nose. So Natalie's parents sent her off to school with a note. It read... Dear Mrs Daffodil, please may Natalie be excused games this afternoon as she has a pig up her nose. Yours, Natalie's mum and dad. What a silly note, said Mrs Daffodil. Nobody has a pig up their nose. I do, said Natalie. Oink, went Natalie's nose. Oh, said Mrs Daffodil. In that case, perhaps you'd better not do games after all. That morning was not a very good one for Mrs Daffodil's class. The children tried their best to be quiet, but every time they settled down to work, Natalie's nose would go oink and disturb them. Mm -hmm. It went oink 
at playtime and spoil the game of hide and seek. It went oink during the story and spoiled the exciting bit. It went oink at lunchtime and suddenly nobody wanted to eat their ham roll. After lunch, Mrs Daffodil said, This afternoon we're not going to do games after all. Oh, what? went all the children. Instead, Mrs Daffodil went on, I want you to invent a way of getting a pig out of Natalie's nose. Hooray! went all the children. Oink! went Natalie's nose. The children all worked very hard. Sophie and Christina wanted to push a big hooked stick up Natalie's nose and pull the pig out. Natalie didn't like that idea. Sean, Alex and Daniel wanted to stick a vacuum cleaner up Natalie's nose and suck the pig out. Ooh, Natalie didn't like that idea either. Kylie and Kim thought the pig might come out if they held Natalie upside down and hit her on the head with a large inflatable rhinoceros. Natalie definitely didn't like that idea. Then Mark and Joseph explained their idea. It was much better. They got a big pepper pot from the dinner ladies and shook it all over Natalie's nose. Ah, 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 choo! Mrs Daffodil caught the pig. We'll call him Ernest, she said, and, and popped him in with the gerbils. Hooray, said the children. Oink, said Ernest. Next morning, Natalie bounced out of bed and ambled down to breakfast. Morning, Squidge, said her dad. I hope there isn't a pig up your nose today. No, replied Natalie, there isn't a pig up my nose. Moo, went Natalie's nose. <gasps> so what has she got up her nose if it's making the moo sound? That's right, it's a cow. Story time! <laughs> Welcome back, Storytimers. Today's read aloud is Maddie's Fridge, written by Lois Brandt and illustrated by Vin Vogel. Read aloud with permission from Flashlight Press. When Sophia and Maddie played at the park, they stretched their toes to the sky. They climbed to the top of the ladder and flew off the end of the slide. They stayed until the buildings grew long shadows and even the taxis stopped honking. Let's play on the climbing wall, Maddie said. No way, Sophia said. I can't reach. Yes way, Maddie scooted up to the top of the wall. Your turn. Sophia put her foot on the bottom rock, grabbed with one hand and stretched. But she couldn't reach the next hold. Sophia's stomach growled. Grrr. I give up. Let's get a snack. No way, Maddie said. Let's stay here. Yes way, Sophia ran to Maddie's building and raced up the stairs. Wait, Maddie ran after her. Maddie was the best climber, but Sophia was the fastest runner. Sophia swung open the door of Maddie's fridge. What have you got? We have milk, Maddie said. I'm saving it for Ryan. He's still little. Why doesn't your mum go to the store? Sophia asked. We don't have enough money. But what if you get hungry? We have some bread, Maddie said. I guess I'll go home to eat, Sophia said. Please don't tell anyone, Maddie said. OK, promise? I promise. Sophia ran home past the bookstore and grocery store. The sun went down behind the buildings and took all the colours with it. Good morning, Mum said. Dinner's almost ready. Lois was wrestling on the floor with Pepito. Sophia opened the refrigerator door. Pepito peeked inside. Sophia's fridge was full of milk and eggs and tortillas and cheese and lettuce and jam and salsa and tofu and even half a can of dog foods. Here you go, Mum said. Sophia and Lois each had a plate of fish and rice. Mum had a plate of fish and rice. Even Pepita had his bowl of dog food with a little bit of fish and rice. Maddie and Ryan only had some bread and a small carton of milk. Sophia couldn't tell Mum. She had to keep her promise to Maddie. Not fish again, Lois said. I want cheesy pizza bombs. Cheesy pizza bombs are a treat, Mum said. Fish is a good source of protein. 
Is fish good for kids? Sophia asked. Yes, Mum smiled. Fish is perfect for kids. That night, Sophia had an idea. Yuck, Maddie said the next day. Oh, Sophia said, double yuck. Fish may be good for kids, but fish is not good for backpacks. After school, Sophia and Maddie raced to the climbing wall. Sophia got there first, but Maddie scrambled past her to the top of the wall. Sophia stretched and stretched. Keep trying, Maddie said. You'll get it. I can't, Sophia jumped down. It's too high. That night, Sophia, Lewis and Mum ate frittata. Pepita had his dog food with a little bit of frittata. Maddie and Ryan still had an empty refrigerator. Sophia couldn't ask for help. That would break a promise. She had to try again. Are eggs good for kids? Sophia asked. Not as good as cheesy pizza bombs, Lois said. Cheesy pizza bombs are a treat, Mum said. Eggs are good for you. After dinner, Sophia packed eggs for Maddie and Ryan. Yuck, Maddie said. Double yuck, Sophia said. Eggs may be good for kids, but eggs are not good for backpacks. Sophia and Maddie raced to the climbing wall. Sophia won again, but Maddie shot past her to the top of the wall. Sophia grabbed one hold, reached for the next, and came down with a thump. That happens sometimes, Maddie called. This is impossible, Sophia said. Keep trying, Maddie said. You'll get it. That night, Sophia, Lois and Mum had burritos. Pepita had his dog food with a little bit of burrito and no salsa. Maddie and Ryan still had an empty fridge. Sophia wished she hadn't promised Maddie. Are burritos good for kids? Sophia asked. Burritos are very good for you, Mum said. Not as good as, Lois started to say. You should pay attention to nutrition like your sister, Mum said. The next morning, Sophia put two burritos in her backpack along with tortilla, beans, cheese and even some milk. Um, no thanks, Maddie said. You haven't even looked, Sophia said. Is it fish? Maddie asked. No. Is it eggs? No. Is it gross? I don't know, Sophia said. Maddie shook the backpack. Something sloshed. Let's look together, Maddie said. One, two, three, go! Burritos are good for kids and good for backpacks too. Do you want some milk? Sophia asked. Thanks, Maddie said, but I'll save the milk for Ryan. Sophia and Maddie raced to the climbing wall. Sophia won as usual and tried to climb. You can do it, Maddie said. Take my hand. Woohoo, I made it to the top, Sophia shouted. We're the tallest kids in the park, Maddie said. Thanks for helping me, Maddie. I couldn't do it alone. Maddie shrugged. That's what friends are for. After they finished playing, Sophia walked home past the bookstore and the grocery store. Her own fridge was full of milk and juice and chicken and yoghurt and bread and carrots and even half a can of dog food. She thought and thought and thought. Maddie's fridge only had two tortillas and a cup of beans and a bit of cheese and a little more milk than before. Sophia didn't want to break her promise, but she couldn't help Maddie alone. Sophia told. She hoped Maddie wouldn't be mad. I'm glad you told me, Mum said. Let's see what we can do together. They loaded grocery bags with milk, flour, chicken, carrots, sugar, oil and even frozen meat and vegetables. Lois pulled his package of cheesy pizza bombs out of the freezer. He thought and thought and thought some more. Then he put his cheesy pizza bombs in Maddie and Ryan's bag. For a treat, he said. At Maddie's apartment, the mums talked, Lois and Ryan played, Sophia and Maddie ran to the park. You broke your promise, Maddie said. I'm sorry, Sophia said. Are you mad? A promise is important, Maddie said. You're more important, Sophia said. I wanted you to have milk too, Maddie smiled. Are we still friends, Sophia asked. Always, Maddie said. Double always, Sophia said. Cheesy pizza bombs, Lois yelled. Our mums made cheesy pizza bombs for a treat. Sophia and Maddie raced up the stairs. Sophia slowed down so they could run together. That's what friends are for. Thank you for listening and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.